Hi, let's start theory of computation chapter 1 that is regular language. So in this chapter I will cover regular language, then finite automata, regular expression, regular grammar and pumping lemma. So before starting regular language some basic term that we will use regularly. Okay. So what is theory of computation? You can say the study of mathematical representation of computing system and their capability is called as theory of computation. So we will do some mathematical representation of computing system and what are the capacity of that. Okay. So next is formal language. You can say the language which have proper alphabet, grammar and a model to recognize is called as formal language. In the formal language, we need to give importance only for the formation of string rather than the meaning of string. Formal language mainly focus on the formation of string rather than meaning of the string. Formal language are more accurate than natural language. It implement artificial intelligence and uh, what are natural language? Natural language is like English, Hindi, Odia, Marathi that human used to communicate with each other that is called as natural language. But uh, what are machine language? You can say C, C++, Java, Python. What machine can understand? That is called as machine language. So language is of two type. One is natural, another is formal. So what is natural? When a human being is communicating with other human being, that is called as natural. And what is formal? When a human being is communicating with machine, that is called as formal language. Next is grammar. Uh, in natural language, we are following some grammar. In every language, there is some grammar. So in formal language, also there is some grammar. You can say grammar is a collection of rules which are used to generate the string. Is called as grammar. So it is a set of rules that we follow to generate string. Grammar is a generating device. By using grammar, we can generate some string. Next is automata. So we can say it is a mathematical representation of formal language. Automata is a recognizing device. So it is a machine which recognizes some string. Automata is a recognizing device and grammar is a generating device. So next is Chomsky hierarchy. So this is a hierarchy that divided the formal language into four types. Type 0 is recursive enumerable language. Type 1 is context sensitive language. Type 2 context free language. Type 3 regular language. For every language there are some grammar like for type 0 recursive enumerable grammar. For type 1 context sensitive grammar. For type 2 it is context free grammar and for type 3 it is regular grammar. And for every language there is a automata or machine that accept it. So for recursive enumerable language automata is Turing machine. For context sensitive language automata is linear bounded automata. And for context free language automata is push down automata. For regular language automata is finite automata. Next is expressive power. The number of language accepted by automata is called accepting expressive or recognizing power power expressive power of fa is one because fa only accept regular language then e of pda is two it accept regular language and context free language e of lva that is linear bounded automata is three it accept regular language context free language and context sensitive language e of tm is four that uh, turing machine accept regular language context free language context sensitive language and recursive enumerable language you can say turing machine is more powerful powerful than uh, LBA. LBA is more powerful than PDA and PDA have more expressive power than FA. Or you can say TM is superset of LBA, LBA is superset of PDA or PDA is superset of FA. So which language FA accept? PDA accept that plus context free language. LBA accept what PDA accept plus context sensitive language. Turing machine accept what LBA accept plus recursive enumerable language. Regular language is accepted by FA and FA is again of two type one is DFA another is NFA. DFA means deterministic finite automata, NFA means non-deterministic finite automata. So every problem can be deterministic or non-deterministic. Deterministic means you can determine what will be the next step but in case of non-deterministic you cannot define there will be more than one option you can go anywhere to reach the destination but in case of deterministic there is a specific path by which you can reach to destination we will just compare dfa and nfa so expressive power of dfa is equal to expressive power of nfa means both finite automata can accept the same number of language dfa is more efficient than nfa because it is a complete structure 
NFA design is easier than DFA. You will know how design is easier. We'll do NFA and DFA. It's contest free language. So PDA that can be divided into DPDA and NPDA. Okay. So every DFA is NFA. Every NFA can be converted to DFA. So NFA we can there are some rules we can follow and we can convert to DFA. And expressive power of DPDA is not equal to expressive power of NPDA. But in case of finite automata, expressive power of DFA is equal to expressive power of NFA. But here it is not equal to. You can see DPDA is subset of NPDA. DPDA is more efficient than NPDA, but NPDA is more powerful. In case of finite automata, DFA was more powerful. But in case of PDA, NPDA is more powerful. All DPDA is NPDA, but no algorithm exists to convert NPDA to DPDA. We cannot convert NPDA to DPDA. So next is LBA. LBA all the property are undecidable. You can say restricted Turing machine is called as LBA. And all property are undecidable. So we don't know whether it is deterministic or non-deterministic. So and epsilon cannot be accepted by LBA but it can be accepted by Turing machine. So minimum size to accept in LBA is 1. But in case of Turing machine, minimum size is 0. You can accept epsilon. Next is Turing machine. So recursive animal language is accepted by Turing machine. And Turing machine is divided to deterministic Turing machine and non-deterministic Turing machine. And expressive power of deterministic Turing machine is equal to expressive power of non-deterministic Turing machine. In case of finite automata, DF and NMP both have equal expressive power. And in case of Turing machine, deterministic Turing machine is equal to non-deterministic Turing machine. And DTM is more efficient than NTM. Obviously, in every case, uh, deterministic is more efficient. But what is more powerful? In case of PDA, NPDA is more powerful. In case of finite automata, DFA is more powerful. Then every DTM is NTM, but every NTM can be converted to DTM. The NPDA you cannot convert to DPDA. NFA you can convert to DFA. And NTM also can be converted to DTM. So TM you can say it is a language generator or enumerator. Enumerator means you can print something. There will be some output. So then you can say it is a enumerator. So TM is a language generator or enumerator. Then we will compare with the memory. So FA don't have any memory or you can say it have static or limited amount of memory. PD equal to FA plus one stack. So it use the data structure stack. In stack we can compare two string or two alphabet we can compare in PDA. So next is Turing machine. So Turing machine is FA plus tape uh, or you can say PDA plus one stack. So PDA uh, uses FA plus one stack. And Turing machine uses PDA plus one stack means you can say FA plus two stack or FA plus two stack that is equal to FA plus three stack or equal to FA plus n stack. So FA plus more than two any number of stack that is equal to just one tap FA plus one tap. So Turing machine that is equal to FA plus tap or you can say PDA plus one stack or FA plus two stack or FA plus any number of stack. Thank you.